Hi, Antonio here with Bulgarian.com. In this right here is my third generation camera slider. I've made a couple of videos with this in the past, but I have also made a few changes that warrant a new video. But before we do that, let me show you the features of the slider. That way you don't have to go back and watch the other videos. As you may already know, most of the sliders out there have these tiny little legs. They're about this long and you have to turn and turn and turn and turn them to get your slider level. And it takes so long to do that by the time you get done, most of the time you don't feel the same about your shot because it's really irritating to have to do that. So I came up with a design where you can just simply turn this right here and you can adjust your legs as simple as this. Another cool thing is that for example, if this is higher than this side over here, all you have to do is, uh, is spread these legs like this and it lowers this side, making it possible for you to get your level. Really, really simple stuff. And of course, if you bring them together, it raises it up. Another cool thing is that if you're one of those people that shoot outdoors, especially in terrain that's really uneven, this right here is really, really cool. You are able to attach extensions to these legs, making it possible for you to shoot in really uneven terrain. I have a picture on the web right now, on the, on the website right now, where I'm on a rock, this big piece of granite, and this side right here is up here, and the rock drops down like this. So I added the extensions to it and I was able to have my slider perfectly level even though I'm on top of this big piece of granite. And um, the slider is sold either with 8 inch legs, which these are it right here, or with 12 inch legs. Another cool thing is that you're able to do this for example. Of course your cam, you would have a swivel right here, a swivel head right here, your camera would be right here. You can shoot like this, straight down, or you can shoot straight up like that. Or you can shoot what I've done in the past with your camera completely upside down. Depending on the height of your camera though, you may have to get the 12 inch uh, legs instead of the 8 inch. But anyway, it's really cool to be able to shoot upside down because it gives you that really, really low to the ground look. It's almost, it almost looks like you're scraping the ground like this and it's really a cool shot to be able to do. Let me show you what this is right here. This right here is your brain. You use this mostly when you're transporting the slider from one location to the other. That way your, your carriage won't be going back and forth like that. Um, this right here is your level. And uh, let me show you over here. I hope that we can see this. Let me tilt this up a little bit like this. This right here is your USB jack for firmware updates. This right here is your DC input. And that is in the event that you want to use an AC-DC adapter or an external batteries. battery. I thought I had one right here, but you know, I bought an external battery that's like this big. It has a switch on it and everything. And it's really cool. If you don't want to deal with the batteries that are, that are in here, which I'll get into in a bit, you can just buy one of those larger external batteries and just hook it up there. Um, and so let me go through the process here of turning it on. This right here, you know what? Let me turn it back around. <laughs> I should have started with it the other way around. Okay, let's go to our overhead right here. This right here is your reset button. This is your on and off. This is a little LED. And this right here is your potentiometer. This is where you would set the speed of the slider or the position of the slider, depending on which mode you, uh, you have it in. And we'll get into that in a bit. But let me show you this right here. If you are in what we call video slider mode, you would start it in the center. The reason for that is that the little microprocessor that's in here needs to know where it's starting. It needs a point of reference to be able to know where it is. There, that way it knows when not to hit the edges over here. It has like an auto return. But for it to know where it is, it has to know where it started. And that's why you started in the center. 
So you, you push down on the reset, turn it on, and release. So now, the little brain that's in here knows when to turn back. Just like that. So let me show you something else. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. This right here is seven and a half pounds. I'm going to try to do this without dropping it. This right here is two and a half pounds. So that's 10 pounds. Now we can actually go more than that, but I really don't feel that it's necessary to do that. So it can handle, to be honest with you, it could probably handle another, another five pounds. But because of its light construction, let's just stick with 10, 12 pounds. But if you have it on the tripod, it should be able to handle 15 pounds without any problem. So let me take these back off without dropping them. Another cool thing is that, let me turn this off. This box right here actually comes off. And you see this right here, it, un it unplugs right here. And you're able to take the box off, add an extension to it, and you can be far away from your slider and controlling that slider with the knob. With that in mind, let's get into the changes that I was talking about. The first change is these two little openings right here. In the old design, you have to take the knob off, remove the lid, and the two 9-volt lithium-ion rechargeable batteries were in here. In this case, you simply lift up on this right here, and your batteries are right there. So. If you have two additional batteries when you're out shooting and these run out, you can just pull these out and put the new ones in there. As you can remember, we have a graphical user interface that works with Windows, Windows tablet, or a Mac, but you have to have a USB cord attached to the computer or the tablet to be able to make your changes. With the Android app, you don't have to do that because this has become a Bluetooth connect connection, which makes it really, really cool because the other day I was on top of a, an overpass on the, on the freeway and there's a video uh, that I'll put the link onto it right there. I was shooting to some time lapse and I was using the second generation slider. But anyway, when I got done, I had a little bit of time and I pulled out my phone, my little phone that I already had in my pocket, and I went into the app and I changed the mode and I did some video slider shots. And it was really, really cool to be able to, sh to, to make your changes with a phone, a device that we all have with us all the time. And this makes it so much easier because even on that shoot, I had this tablet. Where's my tablet? Right here. I have my tablet with me, my Android tablet. But believe it or not, it made it a little annoying to have to have this tablet because it is something that I have to go back to the bag, pull it out, and then set everything up. But because I had my phone in my pocket, I said, well, I reached more for my phone, I went into the app, and I was ready to go. You know, the one thing that I did forget to mention is that this slider, the belt is completely hidden. With most sliders, you have the belt that goes all the way around like this and like that. As you can see here, the only thing that is showing when it comes to the belt is this right here. And this is right here in the event that you have to tighten your belt. You just simply loosen this little bolt right here and pull on it and then retighten it. But as you can see, there's no way you can get the belt hung up on grass or a branch and I think that is really, really cool because believe it or not, my first generation of sliders had the belt on the bottom over here. And I was amazed as to how often I got that thing caught up on something. So with that in mind, um, let's get into the app, okay?